Oh, there we go. We just want to go back to the car. <laughs> what? No. I still haven't seen it. Why? Mushrooms are fascinating, but what actually are they? And why are they so important for people like me who love food? Now wait, before you click off because you think you've clicked the wrong video, yes, this video is about mushrooms, but I promise you they're super interesting and if you stick around, you might learn something new. Mushrooms are in fact just the fruiting body of a fungus. Much like how an apple fruits on a tree to spread its seeds, a fungus fruits with mushrooms that pop out the ground or on trees and drop spores to help the fungus spread. There are over 50,000 species of mushrooms. Some are used for their medicinal properties, some are great tasting and prized by chefs, and some can be deadly. Oh, and some look pretty weird too. Only in the last year have I truly been intrigued by mushrooms, and it all started when I was on holiday in Germany in 2019. I went on a houseboat holiday with some friends and one evening they took me mushroom hunting for the first time. It was late October, the rain had been persistent all week and my friends just insisted we went looking in the nearby forest. To be completely honest, I did think they were a little mad. I'd only ever eaten shop-bought mushrooms before and I'd never even thought of picking my own. I was too scared of the poisonous ones. Anyway, that evening we went walking in the forest and after only a couple of hours, we had two bowls full to the brim of mushrooms. I told you that we have to look for them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there you are. I was told these mushrooms were great tasting, but at the time I didn't quite realize how special this haul of mushrooms was. These were sep mushrooms, also known as porcinis or penny buns as they're known in England. These are highly prized by chefs and after cooking up some pasta with a mushroom sauce that evening, I could agree they were the best tasting mushrooms I'd ever eaten. And that trip to Germany and my first foraging experience is what sowed the seed for my fascination for mushrooms. I now look at the forest floor in a completely different way. In fact, I can't go for a walk now without scanning the ground and straining my eyes till they hurt just looking for mushrooms. The following year came and in spring 2020, I bought myself a quality mushroom book called Mushrooms by Roger Phillips. My main worry about mushroom foraging is of course, picking the wrong mushroom, the poisonous one that kills you. And so I really felt like I needed to become confident with IDing the mushrooms that I would want to take home and eat. Of course, as a rule, you should never eat any mushroom unless you're 100% sure what it is and that it's edible. But whilst looking through this book full of thousands of different species of mushroom, it felt like it was gonna be impossible to ever find something that I could eat and that I could ID correctly and confidently. In attempt to learn as much as I could, I joined a mushroom spotters group on Facebook. Yes, you heard it right, there is a Facebook group dedicated to people who are crazy about spotting mushrooms, but it was really handy because I could see what people were finding at different times of year, I could post pictures of mushrooms that I had found, and people would help me out with IDing them. So yeah, it was a, it was a big help when it came to learning different species of mushroom. Because it was spring, there wasn't a huge amount being found, but one type of mushroom that caught my eye that quite a few people were posting up pictures onto the group of was a species called chicken of the woods. Now this is a brightly colored orange mushroom that grows on dying and dead trees. It can be found in the spring. And I thought, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep my eyes open for this one to start off with. And so I went for walks pretty much every day during the spring, looking hard for this one species of mushroom. This was when I realized mushroom foraging is actually proper hard graft. I thought finding this large orange mushroom in a dark woodland would be easy. But no, I went for a lot of walking, tried in a lot of different forests and woodlands, but eventually I did find it and boy was I excited. I can't believe what I've just found after 
months of looking for some edible mushrooms, I found chicken of the woods. And not just that bit there. Oh, look at that. I don't know, that bit doesn't look as tasty. But, wow. Oh, I've never been so excited about seeing a mushroom. Wow. Oh, yes. After picking it, I took it home and cooked up this strange looking mushroom. In fact, I coated it in breadcrumbs and deep fried it KFC style. What's crazy is that this mushroom actually has a similar taste and texture to chicken. Oh, that crunch. Mmm. The great thing about foraging is that you require hardly any equipment to go and do it. It's a really cheap, easy hobby to get into. You just need to be able to use your eyes and be able to ID what you've found. Having a small pen knife is handy, as well as a bag to put your finds in, but even that isn't absolutely necessary. Other than that, you just need to get out of the house and go for a walk. Throughout the summer months, I continued to learn about different species and even found some edible mushrooms as well, such as this oyster mushroom. But in the back of my head, I was just looking forward to autumn, which is considered to be prime time for mushroom foraging and when I could go looking for penny buns again, the species which we had found in Germany last year. With my fairly new obsession with mushrooms, I spent an awful lot of my spare time researching, watching videos, reading articles. And one thing that caught my eye and one thing that really interested me was the price and the value of some of these mushrooms. There's a species called a truffle and these things are very hard to find. I believe they live underground at the base of trees. They have been sold for up to 2,000 pounds per pound of mushroom. And these things come from the ground. I've heard they can be incredibly hard to get hold of and people actually use trained dogs and even pigs to sniff out truffles from the ground. Luckily, penny bun mushrooms were a little bit more of a realistic species for me to target and I shouldn't need the help of a pig to find them. It was now end of August and after a very dry, hot summer, we finally had a load of rain. Now mushrooms require damp conditions to thrive and so after that rain, I went for a good look and there were plenty of mushrooms about. But what I found wasn't in the forest this time, it was in the middle of some sheep fields. Oh my goodness. Sheep. Mushrooms, can you see them yet? Oh wow. All these, I'm pretty sure are field mushrooms and there are so many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All along there. And they grow in these rings all the way around there. And there's another ring over there. This is incredible. I'm going to try and fill this bag so I have enough for breakfast tomorrow and maybe dinner as well. So these were field mushrooms, edible and very tasty. In fact, they're very closely related to the mushroom that you find in most supermarkets. However, there is one poisonous lookalike called the yellow stainer. Luckily, there's a couple of tests I could do to make sure that what I was picking was the field mushroom and not the yellow stainer. Firstly, I could bruise the mushroom. If it stains yellow once bruised, then it is the yellow stainer and not edible. Also, I could use my sense of smell. I smelt the mushroom, it smelt edible, which means it wasn't the yellow stainer. The yellow stainer smells of chemicals. It's a nasty smell. And those, are the, those couple of tests assured me that what I was picking was the field mushroom. Just come across the mother load. There is a huge patch of field mushrooms there, starting there, and they go along here. <laughs> they keep going. And then there's another huge patch over there. For the next few days, I made the most of this huge flush of mushrooms and picked plenty. I think for the next couple of weeks, every meal I cooked had mushrooms in it. But um, they are very healthy and very tasty, so that wasn't a bad thing. I'm out on another mushroom adventure. I never actually realised how exciting mushroom hunting would be. And now it's autumn, there's loads popping up around everywhere. 
Anyway, I just had a phone call from a friend of mine and he lives on a farm and he found a giant puffball mushroom. Now these things are crazy looking, they're just giant white balls and apparently they taste good. I've never eaten one before, but he said uh, there's a few more to find. So I've just jumped in the car and I'm he heading over to his place now. It's exciting. As you can tell, I'm pretty hyped. I wonder when I'm actually gonna grow up and not get excited about weird things like fish or mushrooms or just things like that. Oh my goodness. You found that. You found that. What? Look at it. It's like an alien object. So that's the nettle pack that they're in. Okay, they're in that patch of nettles. And I like spotted a couple. Mm -hmm. Just threw it, so I like beat a path to them. Yeah. And I found like seven, which is sick. Wow. No way. No way. Are you sick? Yeah, yeah, that one that looks quite here. old. Wow. That's just surreal. Like, you just don't expect to see something like that yeah, just in, so like, cool. in the middle of the. See, I wonder how many there are in. That's exactly what I'm thinking. Yeah. I found these ones, and then I was I just was like hitting it with this stick, and I found and then I just spotted that one, and then I found these two, and they're really hard to spot. So we should have a proper sweep through. Yeah, I reckon we should. Oh yeah, another one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at that. He's not very big, but look at that. <laughs> oh my god! No. It's <laughs> <laughs> look at that. It's huge! We've got a big one. Are you serious? Oh. <laughs> that one is perfect. Oh my god, it's Look at it. absolutely perfect. It's so surreal touching as well. What? Like, that, is that is sick. Surreal. But uh how does nature create something? <laughs> that is mad. Look at that. Crazy. That's a mushroom. Alex just walked into the house. Said he brought me a gift. That's a <laughs> that's a mushroom, mate. That is a mushroom. <laughs> Giant puffball. Giant puffball. It's massive. It's as big as my head. Well, not quite. Alex will have an even bigger head now that he's found big, lovely mushrooms. Wow. Even though I had a great week of foraging, the elusive penny bun was still on my mind and I was still desperate to find one again. I had actually started seeing uh, posts on the Mushroom Spotters Facebook group of people who had started finding them, so I knew now was the time of year when they were starting to appear and I actually had a chance to find one. It had nearly been a whole year since that first forage in Germany where we found bowls full of penny buns and I knew now was the time of year that I had to put in plenty of time uh, to walk and look for these mushrooms. I had heard though that they can be quite tricky to locate and once a forager finds his honey hole he'll keep it a secret for life. That's how, that's how special these mushrooms are to some people. In fact I've heard stories of foragers having fights over certain patches of land which have an abundance of these mushrooms. But I wouldn't find them sat at home thinking about it, I had to get out there and keep looking. So pretty much every day after work I'd head out to the nearby forest and just keep searching and searching. You do start to wonder after hours and hours of looking and searching and scanning the ground carefully, straining your eyes till they hurt, you start to wonder whether there are even any in this forest. They're so easy to miss as well. They could be growing up under some vegetation and you could have just walked past hundreds of them without even knowing. And the thought of that can be quite off-putting and frustrating, but I, I guess that's just all part of the fun. I just popped out the house, gonna go for a walk, come to the local forest, and it actually rained really heavily late last week. In fact, for a good few days, it rained solid, which is a really good sign when looking for mushrooms. I'm gonna go for a nice long walk, head down into the valley where it's really nice and damp, and see what we can find. Watch out for snakes. 
Oh God. The poisonous adder resides here, I've heard. Just found a tiny mushroom poking up through the leaves and I'm not entirely sure what species it is, but there's two which look very similar to this. One I think is called a blusher, which is edible, and there's another one called a panther cap. They both look similar, but one's deadly and one's edible, so I don't know the difference, I'm not going to take it. But it just shows how careful you've got to be. You've got to be 100% sure before you take one, but like I said, I don't know exactly what this one is, so I'm going to leave it there and carry on down. No sign of any penny buns. And that's pretty much what 90% of mushroom hunting is all about, just walking and walking and walking. They're, they're in here somewhere, I'm sure of it, but it just takes perseverance and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I've got the rest of this afternoon free, so I'm just gonna keep walking down this valley. It's so damp and there's moss everywhere. However deflating it can be, not finding any of the target species, you can't complain when you're spending time in incredible places like this. Often you see a deer jump off through the bushes and uh, plenty of other wildlife as well, so can't complain, it's beautiful. Have you found Pokemon? <laughs> yes, I've got Charizard in the forest. No, I Why are you on your phone? I was on my phone because I was doing some research. There's a type of mushroom called a chanterelle, which is apparently one of the best. And I've found something which is the right colour, I think. Sort of looks similar. Smells nice, but I'm just not 100% sure. After some research, I found out this was in fact a false chanterelle. Very similar looking to the true variety, but this one is said to be poisonous. Poor pigeon. Nature is cruel, especially for pigeons. Day 456. Alex is still looking for mushrooms. There's a penny bun that's been eaten. So that's what you want to find? This is the species that I want to find, I'm pretty sure. I can't be certain, but the, the flesh looks just like a penny bun. And that's the cat. But it's been destroyed. But it's been eaten by something. But that mm. means that there could be more around the area. There should be some more in this area, unless they've all like gone over already. But. Where there's one, there should normally be more. The light's just dropping though, and it's quite hard to see. Just gotta keep scanning the ground. It's so easy to miss. What is this? What? What's this? No way you found it, Carl. No way. That's not what you're looking for though. That's exactly what I'm there's another little one. Carl, that is exactly what I'm looking for. But it that it that looks is, like it's been eaten though. I know it has been eaten, but that that's a penny bun. Wait, how long have you been looking no for? No way. Well since since last year when we were, when we were in, in Germany. Germany, yeah. It's a little bit underwhelming though, Alex. A little bit because it's been eaten by slugs. <laughs> Surely you want to find one, like eh? big you chunky do, yeah. juicy um, um, um. You do, but it's a start. It's it's a penny bun. You've made you've made a bit of progress. I didn't even know what I was looking for. I just like I was like, what's that weird little thing, stumpy little thing sticking out the ground? 
a couple of real baby ones. They've only just come out of the ground, so I'm gonna leave them, and maybe come back in a few days when they're bigger. After looking all afternoon, I was so excited to have found my first penny buns in the UK, but what I didn't realize was that things were about to get even better. I don't think I'm gonna come back in the next trip. Probably in a few days. Oh, look at this, look at this, look at this! I just dropped the camera. You dropped the camera. <laughs> oh, there we go. We just walking back to the car. <laughs> what? No. I still haven't seen it. Why? What are you looking at? These are oh, jeez. Oh, <laughs> These are proper penny bun mushrooms. They're huge. Huge? Yeah. Huge, sorry. I can't <laughs> talk. I'm so excited. There's another one there. Four of them. Four? They are big, Carl. There's nothing like what we found earlier. Well, me and I were just walking back and we were like, that's it then, we'll uh, just come back in a few days. Alex has just lost his absolute mind, dropped the camera on the ground and I think he's found something that he's rather excited about. I don't know if there's any more, but just look at that. Oh, Alex, right, look, I found no, one. No, no, I yes. found one. Another one. Just... I mean, it was kind of close to the other one, but... They could be, they could be under us. All right. They could be everywhere. I'm gonna get my paper bag. I thought we were going home empty bagged. <laughs> but on the way back to the car, we stumbled across these big, amazing looking penny buns. They're gonna take, I think, four of them. We're gonna leave the big one. Uh, it's not looking so good. It's got some slug holes for it. But if we leave it there, then it will drop all of its spores and hopefully create loads more next year. But that'll be enough for... Is it spores? Yeah, the spores, they or come is out it of... pores? Spores. It's got pores. Like, oh, these it's... are pores. Oh. And then spores come out of the pores. I'm confused, man. And they're called penny buns, because they... Would you uh, rather find these mushrooms or find a girlfriend? I'd rather find these mushrooms, any day. Whatever floats your boat, I suppose. You can be whoever you want to be. You can like men, women, mushrooms. <laughs> Before I put them in my bag, I'm just gonna trim off the dirty bits on the outside. It just saves having to wash them when I'm back home. That one's been eaten by slugs quite a bit. But that'll be fine, we'll still get plenty out of that. They're so beautiful. They are incredible. Get yourself someone who looks at you like Alex looks at his mushrooms. A bit of love hearts in my eyes now. <laughs> As you could probably tell by the footage, I was very, very excited. You know, to most people, a mushroom is just a mushroom, but I had spent so much time researching, learning, and looking for these incredible things. It just meant so much to me when I found one. So I took the mushrooms home, and the following day, I cooked them up for lunch. Very happy indeed. Lovely meal, steak, forage mushrooms, and a salad. Homegrown salad. Homegrown carrots, yeah. The food tasted great, but what made this meal so special was the fact that I'd found these mushrooms myself. The hunter-gatherer in me was finally satisfied. 